Well, hello. Finally, we make the connection 10 minutes late. Kept getting, kept trying to start it, and I kept getting that I had no connection. Made no sense to me. So I kept starting it over and over and over again. Well, finally, we finally got the connection, and we are live. So today's the uh, uh, Facebook Live is continuing in our series of the value of hiring a professional photographer. And today, what we're going to be talking about, the basics of a camera, or why not myself. Let's start off with saying this. A couple, uh, two, three weeks ago, I did a post, Facebook Live post. And prior to that, I, I did a study in 2017, according to everything I could find, that was estimated that there were 15 to 17 trillion, with a T, photos taken in 2017. Minimum, depending on, on the person you talk to, the minimum number that everybody agreed on was one and a quarter trillion. All because of this right here, our cell phone. People are using them for everything, and they're fun. I use them too, okay? They're cool. In fact, I belong to a group called LBN. Some of you from LBN may be listening, okay? And every so often I take some photos, but you know what? I don't know if it's me. But I talked to another person, two other people this week, who said the same issue. They have a problem of getting blurry or out of focus pictures with them. Why? 100% automated. So all you got to do is point it, aim it, and push the little button. Because it is just that. It is a machine. It has got no control. So the reason why you won't find very many pros using one of these even though we all use them, okay? But the reason the pros don't use them is because you've got no control. If the client says, gee, I want the center sharp and the outside out of focus, maybe something like this here might be, if you, if you can see that, the, the outside gets out of focus a lot, real blurry kind of thing. The center is sharp as a tack, but the outside is blurry. You can't do that with one of these. Here, with one of these, a true camera, I can control everything. That's why most pros will opt for this rather than that. So what's the differences? Hey, these are fun. I'm not saying get rid of them. I'm not saying don't take any pictures. Use it. Have fun. Great. You're going to the family function. You're going out someplace. Great. And if you can get sharp pictures out of it every time, God bless you, okay, if ever you, one of your images are sharp. The only thing I ask from that is do something with the images. Don't let them die in the phone. But with these here, we know they're going to be sharp. Why? Because when we focus through them, we've got a little dot that comes up. I can put the dot over somebody's eye and get it crystal clear right in focus. Now, what's the differences? That's automatic. Everything is automatic. you got no controls. With the camera, you have three major controls. And those three major controls are the shutter speed that controls how fast the shutter operates inside there. You have the ISO, or that's how, should we say, fast the film is, or in low light, you know, can you get a picture without a flash. And then you have what's called your f-stop or aperture as it's called and that controls depth of field and that controls the the flash exposure when you're using a flash and that will control sharpness and, and a lot of different factors add that to the fact that I can take the lens off this bad boy and I can change lenses you can't do that with those so by merely taking the lens off I can go from a real small lens to a great big long lens like you see the guy shooting wildlife with in uh, National Ge Geographic kind of thing. Say. Now each one of these controls does in fact have some things about them. For example the ISO, let's talk about that. The positive part about it is that today's new modern cameras, the fresh ones right out, some of those things can virtually take a picture without a flash in an almost totally dark room. They are phenomenal in that, in that regard. The industry keeps improving and improving and improving that, that you don't need flash to get an image. But there is a result, 
and the result is the image gets looking really grainy and there's just no getting around it there's not a whole lot you can do about it so the higher you crank up that ISO the more likely you're going to get grain in your image so most pros if they have an option prefer to shoot at a low ISO usually mine is at a hundred which is the lowest this particular camera will go therefore I don't have the grain issue the images were more likely going to be clear and they're just going to look absolutely super for that reason. I would much rather use some additional flash in order to make up for the darkness if I, if I have to. The next thing is the shutter speed. Well, I'm here to tell you, wow, okay? I can virtually get a great exposure with natural light by merely putting this camera on a tripod and photograph light coming through a window to photograph food. And it's just the shutter will go for a minute or two minutes just absorbing what light is there. But you got to put it on a tripod. Or I can crank up the, the, the speed, so to speak, from one or two minutes to a 60th, which is normal, to a 120, which is normal. Or like this particular lens is 100 millimeter on the outside, so I would shoot this at 100 speed, okay? That would provide sharp photos. And I could go right up to 300, 400, 500, whatever the light will allow. And the light plays off the ISO. So that brings us to the shutter speed, what it'll do and what it won't do there for you. Then that brings us next to the aperture. And the aperture or f-stop, okay, whichever you care to call it. That's the amount of light generally coming in from the lens is what that generally is. That will also cause, create depth of field. So that when I photo, if you say, gee, I want it super sharp, Bill. I want those eyes tack sharp. But the ears can be out of focus. Then I might put this on the lowest shoulder shutter speed it'll go and with some of the lenses I have it's like 1.2 and that'll just give a real short shallow depth of field. Add that with a long lens of 100 millimeter and man and we're talking inches that'll be in focus and from that point on everything will get blurry and blurry and blurry and blurrier. Generally I wouldn't do that with people <laughs> but if they wanted it it could be done easy enough no problem. Okay. But yes, it's something that's a tool that most professionals will use depending on the item. I use it a lot with food, for example, food photography. Um, so that, that's where that, that plays into, into part, okay? On the other hand, you need something really sharp, okay? F8, F11, that's usually the middle aperture of most lenses, is going to get you something that's going to be reasonably sharp and focused from the front to the back and it's going to look generally pretty good by and large okay so if you got your light enough light and you can see in your camera that it tells you that you've got enough light and you can set it on f8 and you can have a shutter speed that you can hand hold it of a 60th go for it currently right now as I'm sitting in here right now I've got this uh, particular camera set I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not but it is set at 5.6 you will never be able to see that no. doubt highly if you'll be able to see that but that's set at 5.6 is what it's set at and we've got a shutter speed of a 60th of a second kind of thing and when I look at it here there's just no way that is even going to be close to be in enough. I would need a lot of extra light to get a shot. But I'm also got this set at ISO 100, if you remember me saying, okay? So if I crank this up to a thousand, now I might be able to get a, get a photograph without any additional flash. So what's the bottom line differences? Yes, we could talk about this for hours. Books literally has been wrote on this subject. Um, most of the photographers that take a test for certification, 
to the profession of photographers of America, that's one of the basic questions is operating the camera because there's just so many ways of possibly doing it. It just gets really, really crazy. So the big difference is the takeaway from our little 10 minute thing here this morning, it's been about 10 minutes we've been on now. The big takeaway here is simply that with this camera, I have got control or whoever's operating it can control it. This camera and myself, I have no control. I can record an image, whether it's going to be in focus, how much is going to be in focus, whether it's going to be sharp, whether it's going to be bright enough, light enough, or anything else, I have no control over. Here, I can control all those things to make the image look darker, look lighter, do whatever I want to do. I've got complete creative control. This is just yet another reason why most companies will hire a professional photographer to do the work that's important for them. This is the, our tool. Like a dentist has a tool, this is our tool to do the job so that you get the images that's going to take your brand, and that's what I'm all about is brand, okay, making your brand to the next level. So I hope you liked this video. I hope it gave you a little bit of an insight, okay. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them. I, I'm truly sorry we started later than I anticipated, okay. But truly leave any comments. I'll get back with you uh, uh, on any comments that you may have on, on the subject and ask you if I can't answer in there for you or have, a, have lunch, whatever, okay. You know, so that you're totally comfortable with the answer and you understand why, why we went through this kind of thing, okay. Um, if you're here and you like the page, hit the little button down below, okay? You know, if you like the page, tell us what you thought that you liked about it. I really appreciate it. Like that page and, and let us know. Keep in mind that I do one of these series every Friday at 1 o'clock. <laughs> been 1 o'clock all right long. This time we're 10 minutes late. But we're at 1 o'clock. And uh, so next week, by the way, where our subject is going to be, you want to write it down for yourself, and that's the product photography basics. Product photography, I'm talking about such things as anything from um, carburetors, boxes, machinery, cars, refrigerators, stoves, light stands, sofas, couches, you name it, anything that you can think of that's a product, okay? So we're going to be touching base on that. Keep in mind we keep these to like 10 or 15 minutes just to give you a little bit of an insight, okay, as to what it's all about. But uh, I can't possibly cover the entire everything that you you need to know in 10 minutes. It's just not, it's not reasonable to do. So I'm going to let you go for right now. Thank you for checking in there here, okay? Appreciate you listening. If you have a question or comment, once again, please leave it. Like the page. And uh, have a great one. Love to see you here next week, next Friday, 1 o'clock. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye now.